Good afternoon. Good guys. I would like to welcome everyone to Hamilton STEM Academy. My name is Dr. Christopher Brady. And I'm the proud principal of Hamilton STEM Academy. During my four years at Hamilton, I have witnessed a transformation. A transformation that is by no means complete. The revitalizing that is taking place at Hamilton has been made possible by the hard work and dedication of our staff and continued support of our families and community. Hamilton has sustained partners with mentors for the community for our early readers through Hamilton Reads and we continue our work with Nationwide Energy to enhance the schooling experience for our students. This year, 48 first to fourth grade students will participate weekly in an after school experience at Ohio State University in the College Mentors for Kids program. Hamilton is also very proud to partner with St. Stephen's in an after school enrichment program. Although Hamilton has not achieved the academic excellence all stakeholders are working toward, we have seen tremendous progress during the last four years. Including the following strong signs of hope, our school and the Linux community are on the way. The fourth grade scored a 72.2% on the Reading Ohio Achievement Assessment this year, just missing the proficiency rate of 75%. Last spring, Zaire Slack, one of the nine eligible sixth grade students at Hamilton, was selected to be part of the Young Scholars Program at Ohio State University. Upon successful completion of the program, Zaire is guaranteed admission to Ohio State University and will receive a scholarship to cover his co college tuition. Although we have not yet arrived, progress is happening at Hamilton. Abraham Lincoln stated, I will prepare and someday my chance will come. The preparation is unceasing. Our chance has arrived. Thanks in part to our mayor, who besides watching over our city like a hawk, has been instrumental in taking a hands-on approach in our city schools to help navigate to higher levels for all children. <coughs> we, the Hamilton staff, share the same beliefs that are being shared today. The only way we have achieved success and will continue to achieve success is together. Staff, students, families, and the community working together. The district has moved towards site-based management providing our schools with the flexibility and decision-making authority to meet students and staff needs to accelerate achievement. We have a wonderful opportunity to help our children. I am proud to introduce our mayor who is emphasizing the importance of community involvement and working together with our Columbus Education Commission to improve our schools. Mayor Coleman, we appreciate your tremendous involvement in education and making the improvement of our schools your top priority. We extend a warm Hamilton welcome to Mayor Michael Coleman. Thank you very much. I want to thank Principal Christopher Brady and his staff and faculty and students for hosting us today at Hamilton STEM Academy. Dr. Brady, his faculty and staff have dedicated themselves to the children of this school. They come every day to this building and it's without air conditioning. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if we're outside or inside, we're still hot. <laughs> to serve these kids and they cannot do this alone. We as a community have failed the children of this school. And we have failed the children of this district. The State of Ohio Schools report card are released today, and you'll see them soon. And they confirm that we are not meeting the educational needs of our kids, including those here at Hamilton STEM. The report card says we have four F's, three D's, and two C's. Now look, I'm not here today 
to place blame or to point fingers as to why our children are not meeting these standards. Because the truth is that we all share the blame in Columbus, our entire community. I am not here today to make excuses. I'm not here today to moan and groan and complain and explain. I'm here today and we are all here today to take responsibility. We're not here today to, to complain about it, but to do something about it. We are here to say that enough is enough and we aren't going to take it anymore. We are at the crossroads of our city. We can go down one path in that crossroads and we continue with failure. Or we could take the other path and we can have success and progress and make sure that these kids are ready for the jobs and the careers of the future. Failing schools are unacceptable in the city of Columbus. It is our collective responsibility to fix it, to fix what is broken and provide a chance for our kids to succeed. Now the state report card says that Columbus City Schools met only three of 24 academic standards. We met only reading standards in the 10th grade and reading writing indicators in the 11th grade. But we met no science, no math, no social study indicators in any grade. We, we met no reading, no writing indicators in the elementary or middle schools. Our academic performance earned us an F. That's unacceptable. The state report card says that 21% of our students are failing to graduate in four years. And 18% of those students are failing to graduate in five years. Our graduation rates have earned us a D. That is unacceptable. The state report card says that our children are, are not achieving a year's worth of academic performance in each grade level. Our value-added academic achievement earned us an F on the state report card. That is unacceptable in Columbus. The state report card says we have a, a, a widening gap between white students and black students. In fact, 70% of the white students were proficient in reading and only 59% of African-American students were proficient in reading. The achievement gap has earned us an F. And what is that? Unacceptable. Is it unacceptable? Yes. It is unacceptable to have these kinds of grades in the city of Columbus. And so we need more than mere educational improvement. We need an educational revolution in the city of Columbus because those standards aren't going to stay the same. They're going to get tougher as the years go on. So mere improvement will put us even further behind. So only 61% of our third graders pass the reading test. This year, we needed a passage rate of 75% to meet the state standard. But next year, we'll need an 80% passage rate. We got to get better, faster. We need a revolution of education in our city. And the future of our city absolutely depends on it. And that revolution begins, it begins here today. That revolution begins with the, our version of the Declaration of Independence. And our version of the Declaration of Independence is of 55 recommendations from the Commission, Columbus Education Commission. And some of the members are here today. And those 55 recommendations begin with the fundamental principle 
that every child in Columbus deserves a quality education. Every child. Each and every child in every neighborhood of the city deserves a quality education. And those recommendations were founded on the principle that quality education should not depend on the color of a child's skin, the language that child speaks, the neighborhood that child lives in, or the size of that parent's pocketbook. Those 55 recommendations are the path to freedom from the state of failure we live in today. We need to walk down the path of freedom from those, the state of failure together, arm in arm, stacking hands, to make education and this plan work for our citizens and work for our young people. Now we have a new interim superintendent, and that superintendent is Dan Good. On his first day on the job, Dan came in ready to do what he had to do. And Dr. Good embraced the plan and has been implementing the Columbus plan over these past 30 plus days. And he's making a difference. And he's done it before. He did it in Westerville, where he saw where he had economically disadvantaged students double during Dr. Good's tenure. And yet, at the same time, during that same time frame, the district improved academically, achieving an A for meeting the state standards for each of the 24 state tests in 2013. Now I'm going to take off my coat. Because <laughs> I'm hot, but I'm more hot about where we are today. And I'm excited about where we're going tomorrow. The Columbus Plan. The Columbus Plan invests in supporting great teachers for kids in this school and in all our schools. <coughs> the Columbus Plan would support Dr. Brady with flexibility, the authority, and the accountability to operate his own school and continue the programs that are working toward the working toward improvement. Actually greater academic performance. Hamilton, Hamilton fell short of the fourth grade reading test by only two points. Only two points. And we need Dr. Brady and his team to have the ability uh, to prove out their success without having to ask permission from central office. Just get it done! Get it done! Right here at Hamilton. The Columbus Plan will put these kids on a level playing field with other students around the state and around the nation by giving them basic access to technology in the classroom. The Columbus Plan would invest in innovative methods to identify the children, uh, uh, to identify the children of this school that need additional assistance for one-on-one -on -one tutorings. The Columbus Plan would expand and replicate high-performing Columbus City District schools, replicate them, duplicate them, while strategically locating new good schools to serve in those neighborhoods that don't have access to them. <coughs> the Columbus Plan would, quali uh, would provide quality early childhood education so the children of Hamilton STEM Academy can come to kindergarten ready to learn. So today, 42% 42% of the kids at this school are not ready to learn when they come to school. Almost half of those kids here who need significant intervention in order to do their work, needs help. <clears throat> On top of that, there's another 36% that need targeted instruction in one or more subject areas. Now, you add those together, that 78% of the kids at this school would benefit from the Columbus Plan. 78% of them. 
we think that as a community, we owe support to these kids. We need to fight for these kids today. We need to fight for them so that they can grow up to fight for their kids. So they can grow up to careers, they can grow up to start businesses, they can grow up to be special and to lead this city. And so I want to bring up here a teacher, a teacher standing with us today, a great teacher of this school, and her name is Erica Jones. Erica? Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you, Mayor Coleman. I've had the pleasure of starting my 15th year here at Hamilton STEM Academy. We have a staff that is extremely hardworking and dedicated to servicing each and every child. With the great leadership of Dr. Christopher Brady, we've been able to change the culture of our building by raising our expectations as educators and the expectations of our students. Even though we roll up our sleeves every day and commit to the challenges that we face, there are still some vital things that we need immediately. We need more early intervention programs. Many of our students start at an unfair distance. They need tools and skills that would better prepare them for the start of the school. We need more after school programs. Education doesn't start at 9 and end at 3.30. It's a continuous process. We need the Linda community to be a safer place. Students need to feel safe walking to and from school to the nearby recreation facilities, to the library. And every time we have a lockdown here at school, it's time taken away from teaching and learning. We can't say this enough. We need more parent involvement. Educating a child is a team effort. We cannot do this alone. When our parents arrive here, we need to be able to provide them with resources that will help them guide their child's educational journey. And I'm glad to introduce a great parent who is involved, and her name is Jocelyn Biggers. Good afternoon. I want to thank Mayor Coleman and Dr. Good for just for this desire to want to hear from a parent's perspective as well as a teacher's perspective. Let me start by saying I have two children that attend this school. So even though the school is failing, that does not mean that my children are failing. It does not mean that their friends are failing or that even the parents are failing our, our children. This staff at this school, from Dr. Brady to Ms. Jones, all the teachers, they are exceptional. They come here every day wanting to fight for our children and educate our children. Since my daughter was in kindergarten, she's now in sixth grade, the first thing I heard was she has to take the standardized test to benchmark where she's going to be and where she's going. I understand the need to benchmark our teachers to see if they're on par. I understand the need to benchmark our, our children to see if they're grasping the concepts. Mm -hmm. But what I don't agree with necessarily is that if that's all they're taught to do is how to pass a test to raise a school, sto to raise a school score, what else are, are they going to learn? There's a lot of things that are left out of the gap that's not on the test that these kids are not being exposed to. I think that my children and their friends, they need more exposure to things outside of this community. They need more exposure to world happening. So when they come back home to lend the community, they are able to appreciate what they have more and maybe even emulate what they saw in our neighborhood so that, as Ms. Jones spoke, those safer things could come, could come to take place. Every child does not learn the same. There are different learning styles for each child. And just because a child does not fit into the box of what this test says they are, does not mean that they are not necessarily ready to move on to the next level. Um, I want my daughter, when she leaves this school and she goes to middle school, and then on a high school, I want her prepared to go on to college. I don't want her to get there and have to take remedial classes because her foundation in elementary and middle school and high school wasn't set firm. Um, I, ag I agree with Ms. Jones where she said that as parents, we need more resources available for our children. As a parent, I want to be proactive in my child's education. I don't want to be reactive after it's determined that what was here before did not work. Um, 
I want to be able to sit down with teachers and write out a plan and a goal for my children that they're able to follow that will show them that you are valuable, you are worth something, you can achieve what's set before you. Um, we, we want to be involved. We need more things that will help us be able to teach at home. Like she said, it does not stop at 3 o'clock. But be able to retain what's taught at school, retain it at home, go over it, and then when they come back to school the next day, facilitate a better learning environment for our children. There are schools just like this, with teachers just like this, and kids just like this, all over this city that are getting a failing grade. But that does not mean that the school as a whole is failed. As a parent, we want to get behind our teachers, we want to help our teachers, and we just want resources available to us to continue their plan. And now, Dr. Dan Good. This state report card is not acceptable to this community, and it's not acceptable to me. For failing to meet 21 of 24 academic standards, there are no excuses, and I offer none. Having said that, I am dissatisfied, but I am not discouraged. I'm not discouraged because this state report card reflects the school district's past. We have a plan for the future. That plan is going to capitalize on the momentum that has been generated by the good work of the Columbus Education Commission and the Board of Education's Millage Committee. The school district cannot succeed in isolation, and our community's focus on collaboration, partnership, and accountability will ensure that every student in the city of Columbus, every student in the city of Columbus, do you catch that? Every student every in the student, city of this Columbus can achieve his or her full potential through access to a high-performing school that provides high-quality instruction. Would you like that? Would you like that? We need the community to support the Columbus Plan for Education. I began reaching out and listening to and engaging our community even before the moment I walked through the doors of Columbus City Schools. My responsibility is to help change Columbus City Schools from within, to help implement the Columbus plan. So let me tell you some of the things that we are doing. We are investing in innovation. For example, we are partnering with The Ohio State University to provide reading recovery to teacher coaches in our elementary schools. This partnership reflects a strategy to address the literacy needs of our children so that all children are reading at the third grade standard before they complete their third grade year. Reading recovery is an intensive reading intervention initiative, which provides one-on-one -on -one daily intervention with first grade students having the greatest difficulties to learn to read. The Ohio State University Columbus City Schools Partnership will allow us to train literacy collaborative coaches to provide direct classroom instruction by using data to monitor our progress and aligning our combined efforts we will support classroom teachers with documented leading edge strategies to improve student reading and literacy skills. The fundamental, the most requisite skill for each and every child to reach her or his potential. In looking at how we could provide even greater support to our schools, and most importantly, to our kids through their principals and their classroom teachers, it became evident that we needed to look differently at how we deployed administrative support services. We have taken the first steps to decentralize administrative support services, locating positions that have typically been situated in offices throughout the district and moving them into available space within our schools. I believe that by redistributing administrative and support staff into schools with the greatest need, we can provide more focused, highly skilled, and practical support for our principals and our teachers. Staff will be offered job embedded professional development, such as classroom peer-to-peer -peer monitoring and on-site training and development. We need to stop taking teachers out of the classrooms for training and stop placing professionals in centralized locations away from the school building. This approach allows us to target a previously unprecedented amount of support for our schools. At the same time, 
We have begun efforts to restructure some administrative and support functions. And where appropriate, we are streamlining the resources by combining positions, reassigning responsibilities, and in a few areas, eliminating positions. We are able to do this by shifting to site-based management, which Dr. Brady spoke to. This places greater decision-making authority with principals, school building leaders, and their community. Our principals know and understand our district's goals, and we are prepared to empower them to achieve those goals through the creativity and innovation of their teachers and staff. I'm confident that through this new freedom to address the unique, specific needs of each building in its community, our teachers and principals will be better positioned to provide the high-quality education our city's children deserve. We are going to identify, we are going to target, and we are going to monitor our students who are not meeting academic standards. We're going to identify where they're falling short. We're going to focus on them to bring them where they need to be. Every principal and every teacher will know which of their students needs additional help and the area in which that assistance is needed, and we're going to provide that assistance. This will educate our children, improve their test scores, but most importantly, prepare them for success. Today. I'm proud to announce a new partnership with the Columbus Metropolitan Library. Is Pat Lisinski here? Yes. Pat Lisinski from the library is here, and I want to recognize him for his leadership. The Columbus Metropolitan Library is helping to better prepare Columbus City School students by delivering materials directly to schools, helping to ensure that books are in the hands of our school children by issuing kid cards so that our school children will now have a new library card allowing them to check out three items with no fines and no parental signature required. And how about this? Columbus Metropolitan Library is offering all children in grades kindergarten through 12 a free and safe place to get help with their homework from the staff and volunteers at each of the Columbus Metropolitan Library's locations. Did you hear what I just said? I'm going to repeat this because this is important. Columbus Metropolitan Library is offering to all children, grades kindergarten through 12, a free and safe place to get help with their homework from staff and volunteers at all 21 locations. Parents, take advantage of this opportunity. It's like a Revco commercial because that's not all. Columbus Metropolitan Library today is announcing the creation of a new Director of Education Programs and Partnerships position that will help develop outcomes in concert with Columbus City Schools. This new position will partner and collaborate directly with us to ensure that students have the resources they need to succeed outside of the classroom. Columbus Metropolitan Library staff will visit Columbus's at-risk neighborhoods to train parents and provide support and offer caregiving in essential pre-literacy skills so the parents can help prepare their children for kindergarten. These are the kind of partnerships we need to be making throughout this community to ensure the success of our kids. Education is everyone's responsibility. We all have a stake in it. We all must participate in it. If we implement our plan, then one year from now, we will be telling a very different story. We will be meeting academic thresholds. We will be meeting graduation thresholds. We will be closing those achievement gaps. And we will be providing the students of this district and our community with new hope and new opportunities. I thank you for coming today. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I've heard a lot of this before. A lot of these are good ideas. The question has seemed to have been, how do you pay for new technology? How do you pay for getting the school buildings addressed so that there can be school-based administrators? It has to cost money. I know there's a levy coming, but I can't imagine that all of this be addressed by raising people's taxes? Well, you answered it. Uh, there is a levy, November 5th, and we didn't come here to talk about the levy or to make this a levy uh, 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 piece, but this is, we're talking about the grades and 
and we're not happy with them. That's our focus. But since you mentioned it, <laughs> let me talk about it if I could. Uh, yes, there is a levy. And in that levy, the school district has agreed to save $200 million to provide efficiencies. And you ask if they can do that, I say they can. Because when the city of Columbus went to the public and asked for an income tax increase, we asked, we said we would save $150 million. We instead have saved $240 million already. And, the, and the, it keeps going up. Those savings continue. And so, yes, uh, what's before the voters is a reform package. It is not business as usual. Business as usual will not survive in the city of Columbus. And so what we want is change. And what that levy is represents change. It represents all the 55 recommendations <coughs> of the Columbus Education Commission. Carol, we've had many meetings about this. What will change? What will change is everything, top to bottom. And we need the public to support it. So quick follow up on that, you talk about change within the district and changing what we do. In recent years, to my memory, Columbus voters have never turned down a Columbus City School levy, and yet performance keeps going down in the district. Where is the big change that we're seeing? Is it the city district partnership? Is it the city probably well, there's 55 recommendations we've put forward, which represents our Declaration of Independence from the past. It represents a path towards victory, a path towards uh, uh, a revolution of improvement. Uh, everything from uh, engaging new teachers uh, and keeping the good ones and, and making sure that they're able to teach in the classroom to an independent auditor that's to root out waste and fraud within the district, to uh, providing for replication of good district schools and replication, and, and to provide for schools in areas where there are uh, no good schools in parts of our city. Uh, it is a full range of, of uh, 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 recommendations we're asking the public to support. It is the reform package. If there are additional questions, these folks will be available for one-on-ones. Thanks very much for coming.